G'day, here's a puzzle. It's a grid walking puzzle, it goes as follows. Here's a grid of squares, here's the starting cell, and here's the ending cell. And my question is, how many ways can I walk from cell to cell, starting at S and ending in E? But there's a restriction. The steps I can make can only be horizontal steps to the right, so I'm only going to do right steps, or vertical down steps, downward steps. All right, R's for rights and D's for downs. That's it, they're the only moves you can do. So for example, I could go starting at S, right, 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 down, 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 that gets me to the end, one way, one of many. I could go down, right, right, down, down, right, right, two ways. I could go down, 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 right, 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 three ways, and so on. So my question is, how many different ways are there from start to end, given those types of motions? Now you look at this grid, and you might say to yourself, okay, has this fellow been a bit silly? Because for example, I mean, I've drawn S here and E here, and there's an extra row at the bottom, and there's an extra two columns at the right. Could I ever go down to the very bottom row? Well, the answer is no, because if I ever found myself at the bottom row, I've made a mistake, because I'm not, not allowed to go up to get back to the level I need to be for the E. Or if I went too far to the right, to these two end columns, I can't go back left to get back to the E. All right, so I was a little bit inefficient with my grid. I could have just chopped off the last two columns of the bottom row. But still, the question remains the same. How many ways from start to end? All right, well, I could just start listing them, and that would be awfully, awfully tedious. So the question is, is there a clever way to think of this? How can I get this count without doing too much hard work? Hmm, all right, well... For starters, I've kind of given something away. I've got R's and D's. I could go right, 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 down, down, down. was the very first thing I said. So I could encode, encode that journey as, was it a right step, right step, right step, right step, four rights, followed by, I'm here, then down, 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 three downs. So there's one possible journey. I think another journey I said was something like, a, what, down, down, right, right, down, right, right. What was that down, down, right, right, down, right, right, I think I said. Um, and I think I also said down, 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 right, 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 right. Down, 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 right, 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 right. And given the previous part of this course, you might be wondering something at this point. These look like collections of R's and D's being rearranged. Hmm, first, but first of all, it happens that each of these cases, each of these examples has four R's and three D's. Does that make sense? If I just wrote down some random combination of four R's and three D's, he goes right, down, down, right, 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 down. Uh, one, two, three, four R's, three D's. Okay, does that word really correspond to a path? Well, let's check. Here I must start, go right, then down, down, right, 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 and down. That really is a path. And does every path really correspond to a word with four R's and three D's? You bet. So actually, this counting problem going from start to end is really just the same question we've been dealing with all along in this course. How many ways can we the letters of four R's, so R is four of them and D's is three of them. How many ways can I create words with four R's and three D's? To which I know the answer has to be, okay, there are going to be seven letters in total. The answer must be seven factorial, uh, four labeled R, three labeled D, bingo. But let me actually work out this number. I really work out these numbers. So there's going to be a seven times six times five times four times three times three times three times one. But that four times three times two times one is going to get cancelled with the four times three times two times one on the bottom. So I can stop there. But I've still got the three factorial three times two times one on the bottom. So it's seven times six times five divided by three times two. Oh, three times two is six. Cancel the six in the numerator. The answer is actually 35. So it turns out there are 35 ways to get there. And we actually have the formula for that number. It's coming from 7 factorial, 4 factorial, 3 factorial. Wow. In fact, we could do this technique now to answer any question about how many ways to get to a particular cell from the start. For example, here, to get to this very bottom corner, if I went all the way to the grid, end corner of this grid, it would be how many steps to the right? Starting here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps to the right. How many steps down? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. So it needs 6 rights and 4 downs. So the question is, how many ways can I arrange six rights and four downs? Well, that's ten letters, ten factorial, ten slots, four of them to be labelled, uh, what did I say, Ds, and six of them to be labelled rights, downs. Bingo, I could work at that number. That's the number of paths to get from there to there. In fact, that technique suggests something very clever. I, all I need is know how many right steps there are and how many down steps there are. To get to anywhere on this rightmost column, that I believe was six right steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. And to get anywhere on this bottommost row, that's four down steps. One, two, three, four. This row is actually three down steps, two down steps, and one down step to get anywhere on this second row. How many down steps to get on the very top row? That requires zero down steps to get anywhere along there. And also, uh, five right steps, four right steps, three right steps, two, one, zero right steps. Here's something interesting. How many ways can I get to this cell? 
It involves three rights, there it is, and zero downs. So if I'm following this technique, how many ways can I arrange three rights and seven down, uh, zero downs? Well, that's three factorial of the letters, zero labeled down, three labeled right, and that's three factorial over zero factorial, three factorial, uh, six over one times six, it's one way. Which actually makes sense, because how many ways can I get from start to there? All I can do is go straight across. In fact, there's ones all along here, and even with zero in my form for zero downs, thank goodness we settled zero factorial to be one in the previous part, because it makes good geometric sense here. In fact, every cell here is one, 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 one. There's only one way to get this cell. There's actually zero rights and four downs, so the formula would be four factorial, zero factorial, four factorial, which is indeed one. Bingo. So actually, I could start filling out this entire grid. In fact, how many ways can I get to this cell? Uh, well, actually, I can just see the answer. I could go right down or down right. So there's actually two ways, which I think fits the formula. One right and one down. How many ways can I make uh, range of those 1R, 1D? Well, two ways. Uh, how many ways here? Well, actually, I can see the answer. I could go right, right, down, or I could go right, down, right, or down, right, right. So I can actually just fill in the answer as three. But I bet that fits my formula as well. Uh, this one. That's like what I just did before. That was two rights and one down. This one's two downs and one right. It's basically the same problem, just the D's and R's are switched. There must be three as well. Okay, I'm getting a bit tired. I'm going to do this cell next, but I'm going to think about it cleverly. I could work out the formula. Uh, two rights and two downs. That's four letters, four factorial over two factorial for two factorial. But I don't even know that answer is six in my head. But think of it this way. Let's think purely geometrically for a moment. To get to this cell, I've got two options. Since I can only move rights and downs, I either get to the cell directly above it, up here, and then step downwards. And there are three ways to get to the cell up here. So actually there are three paths that ended here that I can step down from. I'll draw like three arrows representing this. get yourself here, any one of three ways, and then step down. Or I can get myself here to the cell that's just to its left. There's actually three ways to get there. There's the number three. And then take a step right. So to get yourself anywhere there, any three ways there, three, three ways there, excuse me, and then take a step to the right. So now sort of geometrically symbolized here, actually there's six ways to get to this cell. Now, let's keep going. For this cell, to get to it, either get to the cell above it, there's only one way to do it, do that one path and you can come down, or you either get to it by coming to the leftmost cell, take any of the three paths there and take a step to the right from it. One plus three is four. In fact, now we're going to see a general principle that to get to any one cell in the grid, count how many ways to get to the cell above it, count how many ways to get the cell to the left of it, since I'm going to do rights and downs, they're my only options to consider. Once you've got those two counts, then take a down step or take a right step to extend those paths gives a total of the sum of those two counts for that next cell. 4 plus 6 is 10. In fact, I can go through this whole grid and start filling in all the numbers by using this lovely geometry. Uh, 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. 10 plus 5 is 15. 10, uh, 20 plus 15 is 35. Uh, 1 plus 4 is 5. Always going for the cell above, the cell to the left, 15. As a check, 15 plus 20 is the 35 I got before. Thank goodness the two approaches give the same answer. Beautiful. So I love this geometry interplay with algebra. Here I've got actual ways to work out the count of paths in each, to each cell, excuse me, and I've got a geometric way of doing just adding up pairs of numbers. So in general, look what we've done here. We've numbered the columns starting with the count at zero, zeroth column, oneth column, twoth column, threeth column, fourth, fifth, sixth. We started the rows, zeroth row, oneth row, twoth row, threeth row, fourth row. That represents the down steps, that represents the, the right steps. And to work out the entry in any cell, suppose it's the eighth row, meaning a right steps, and the, uh, sorry, eighth column, meaning a right steps, and the bth row, meaning b down steps, then the count of cell paths to that cell would be, give myself some space. So in this grid, row, cell, sorry, column numbered a, a right steps, row numbered B, B down steps, is a total of A plus B letters, R's and D's, that have to be arranged such that there are ARs and BDs in that arrangement. There is the general formula for the entry in the eighth column, B row, assuming your starting accounts at zero. And just to finish this off, because that's quite remarkable in and of itself, what number should go in the very tippy top left corner? 
it's zero steps right, zero steps down. And the question is, how many ways can I walk from uh, start to start? It doesn't make much sense. The answer could be zero, don't do anything, you're already there. Or well, the answer could be one, because the answer is do one thing, namely stand there, do nothing. That's your one way to get there. So is the answer zero or one? Well, if we're going to go by the mathematics and how we set things up, according to this formula, it's the zeroth row, zeroth column, so it should be zero plus zero factorial, zero factorial, over the number of down steps, number of right steps, zero factorial, zero factorial. And we decide to set zero factorial equals to one, which is a social convention, but it's a very convenient social convention because in that case, it gives the answer one, a well-defined answer of one. So apparently, the math we set up that feels right and good here for about how we think about zero factorial, suggesting interpret the number of ways to walk from start to start as one way. Hmm. Well, it's good and meaningful along the rows and columns. I, I know that's always questionable, but the math to be consistent among itself wants to be one. That's interesting. All right, so there's a lovely grid of numbers with lovely algebraic properties. There's a formula for each cell and lovely geometric properties. Each cell is the sum of the two numbers just above and to the left of it. Curious. Let's play with this some more in the next lessons. So play with it. Look at the text below this video. Have some fun with this and we'll keep going.